In, 19, uh, in the 70s, in the in the mid 90s, in the mid 1970s, the last laugh was over. for me was simply moving the flying trapeze and making it ten times bigger. We could actually do stuff like have sets and props and musicians and a band. And in fact the first idea of a circus coming in here which was one of the huge early successes was Circus Oz. Circus Oz! On his great bloody stack of chairs. Robin Laurie, alias Lance Corporal Joni Spagoni. And the last laugh season was nine months. And so we set up there surrounded by people eating and drinking and having a fabulous time and watching high wire people walk right over the tables. They could be transported by the sort of beauty of the aerial acts. They could indulge the most lurid sort of fantasies with the sexual acts of the kangaroos on stage. It solidified the sort of the niche of craziness of the last laugh, really. We were very conscious of Australianness, and there was a really strong thread in that of larrikin humour. We actually look back then to people like George Wallace and Roy Reen, who were the Aussie battlers, mocking the higher ups. Um, falling round on their bums, falling into the swimming pools, you know, flicking dust in the, the nose of the upper class. What we shared in Circus Oz with people like that was the vaudeville tradition and of being really versatile and really multi-skilled. We played music, fell over, <laughs> wrote our own stuff, did trapezes, you know, balances, all that sort of stuff. Went on tour, Circus Oz drive very old beat-up trucks and stay with friends. Keep moving, please. If you could, don't just stand there. Give the country a bad image. We could have been a busload of Japanese investors, and I wonder what we think now. It really needs to be more people like me travelling around the streets telling people what to do, I think. Stop, stop, it's here. The comedy cafe and the co- Oh, bugger me. It's a Japanese sushi we delivered to the bloody Japanese have taken our culture off us and turned it into raw fish. I'm Rod. Yeah. Very nice to meet you. How do you do? Yes, did you know that this used to be the comedy cafe? Yeah. You knew that, did you? Did, yeah, well, I used to own it. Hey! <laughs> And of course, if you've got LPs, you can do big ears, or for people with a sense of the bizarre, whack, 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 whack. <laughs> We're going to recreate a, a comedy routine for the Comedy Cafe here now. Is that all right? Ah, uh, now? Yeah, it'll only take a couple of minutes. Uh, Lights up! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Comedy Cafe for another fantastic evening of entertainment. A funny thing happened to me. Take my mother-in-law, please. Ladies and gentlemen, these jokes were gone. They were passed. Now we were doing jokes like, take my stepmother, please. Or take my in vitro fertilization test tube, please. There's a birthday. Any other celebrations? 
In all those venues, the audiences could be extremely noisy and disruptive. They could be fantastic. They always, at their best, um, poured so much energy back to the performer, and that energy, it's a, it's a hard thing to describe. Uh, people who break the pain barrier in marathons must understand that feeling that you get um, with that balance between the performer and the audience when things are going so well that your feet don't touch the ground. Footnote. Now, I don't... Uh... At that stage, in the late 70s, early 80s, is when the live comedy um, scene really boomed. I came to this town, the live comedy capital of Australia. Seen that the gift of the gab, I could crap on for hours. <laughs> and those poor performers who used to work with me would sit out the back thinking, well, fucking hell, is he ever going to get off? <laughs> okay, you're funny, but for Christ's sake, get off. Well, I'm uh, Queensland, born and bred. And the fact that I was born in Queensland, I think, has uh, had a lot to do with me having a sense of humour at all. Well, I don't call them yuppies anymore, do they? I don't call them yuppies anymore, do they? Lombards. Lots of money, but a real dork. <laughs> and deliver us from weevils. <laughs> For life is a ripper, and power's a bugger. Trevor and Trevor. You didn't pay all that money to come in here and see somebody go... <laughs> and everybody who was doing comedy at that stage there, <laughs> it seemed... Everyone tried to be as bent as each other, or who could be the bentest, and who could flip an audience out the most with the weirdest shit. There they got the microphone started banging into me, going, I had a really bent way of explaining society as it stands to people. And I'd just flip things on their head and talk to a popular audience, which is always my gig. 1981. Sydney Upper Bridge, my impression of, thank you, camera two. Sydney Upper Bridge, my impression of, thank you. <laughs> and the thing with a comedian, it seems to be, you have to be the funniest person in the room for that 30 minutes. Or some bugger's gonna pipe up and say something funnier. What is this? <laughs> Sydney Tower Revolving Restaurant. <laughs> 